cars are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the on Twitter, 7 a.m. A group on the Welcome to Hashtag PH Road 2013. Today on Rapper, the Philippine government raises alert level 2 in Bangkok, tells Filipinos to prepare to evacuate. A survey says Yolanda victims grade President Aquino very good. And in Ukraine, restrictions on the right to protest lead to riots. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Prepare for possible evacuations as the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, to Filipinos in Bangkok. It raised crisis alert level 2 in Thailand's capital and surrounding areas. In a statement Thursday, the DFA says, while there's been an effort to maintain a state of normalcy in the Thai capital, the situation remains fluid and volatile, particularly in anti-government protest areas. On January 14th, the DFA raised alert level 1 over Bangkok. The DFA says, quote, Exercise vigilance and take necessary precautions. Thailand declared a 60-day state of emergency in Bangkok after street protests against Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat. But protesters promise to keep fighting. Bing Lakson says he doesn't have enough powers as Rehabilitation Secretary. President Benigno Aquino appointed Lakson to lead rehabilitation efforts after the devastation left by Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan. But Lakson says his appointment through a memorandum order instead of an executive order means his position has no legal weight. He has no say over the budget. His role is limited to an overall manager or coordinator. He says he could do more if he had more power. On New Year's Day, more than a month after the typhoon, at least a thousand corpses remained unburied in Tacloban City, prompting Lakson to order a mass burial. Lakson says he considers this his first test in facilitating and coordinating. The rehabilitation SAR says coordination is his greatest challenge, comparing the rebuilding task with Indonesia's efforts after the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. Lakson says Indonesian Senior Minister Kuntoro Mangkusubroto had, quote, near absolute authority. He adds he could have gone beyond coordination if he had the kind of authority Kuntoro had. So if I was given uh, that, that kind of a power, baka ngayon marami nang nakatayong mga bahay sa kaskwelahan doon, baka ngayon marami nang nakatayong mga munsipyo doon. Kasi if you're given enough authority, as long as you're well-intentioned and you will not abuse the authority given to you, you can accomplish more. That's, that's, uh... The victims of Typhoon Yolanda give President Aquino a high satisfaction rating in a newly released breakdown of a social weather station survey. Among the typhoon survivors polled in December 2013, 73% say they were satisfied with the president, 19% said they were dissatisfied. It's a net satisfaction rating equivalent to very good. Outside the Yolanda, Yolanda devastated areas, 69% said they were satisfied with Aquino, while 21% said they were not. An earlier SWS survey shows the president's satisfaction rating was not affected by Yolanda, despite widespread criticism of the government's response response to that typhoon that killed at least 6,000 people. Yolanda wreaked havoc in the Visayas, where Filipinos are historically kinder to government officials according to past survey results. The Yolanda victims give Aquino a very good grade, even though they consider themselves poorer than the rest of the country. In December 2013, 72% of Yolanda victims consider themselves poor, compared to 52% among non-victims. Interior Secretary Mar Rojas and Tacloban City Mayor Alfred Romualdez meet Thursday at a Senate hearing on the government's disaster response for Yolanda. The two shake hands before the hearing begins. <coughs> Rojas and Romualdez earlier clashed over the government's relief efforts. Romualdez accused Rojas and President Aquino of refusing to take over rescue efforts in Tacloban unless local governments signed over control. Rojas said he only wanted to clarify the division of work between the national government and local officials to avoid finger-pointing. On Thursday, Rojas also defends his remark, referring to the political families of the president and Romualdez, saying he's aware that this may come into play and cause problems. 
Romualdez is a relative of former First Lady Imelda Romualdez Marcos, whose husband jailed the father of President Aquino. More than two months after the typhoon, Romualdez says his city still needs stable power. Ah, uh, kuryente. Yeah, kailangan i-fast track talaga <laughs> para magkaroon na ng kuryente the schools, magkaroon ng kuryente even the airport, you know, uh, lahat generator pa eh. So, kailangan tulungan. 5% lang ang kuryente namin eh. Kaya malaki pang ayusin. Senators criticize energy officials for failing to use the state-owned Malaya power plant to bring down the price of electricity and help consumers. During the hearing into the power rate hike of Manila Electric Company or Meralco, Committee Chair Senator Serge Osmeña asks the Power Sector Assets and Liabilities Management Corporation or PASALM to explain why it did not run the National Power Corporation's Malaya plant, which could have lowered prices in the spot market. Meralco earlier attributed its rate hike to the more expensive power it had to buy in the spot market. This was caused by the maintenance shutdown of the Malampaya plant. Pisalm says it did not use the, Malampa the Malaya plant to avoid incurring losses. But Senator Chis Escudero hits Pisalm officials for keeping the reserve Malaya plant offline just to cut its losses. Osmenta also says the decision to keep the old plant without using it during times of emergency was, quote, a conflict of policy. He tells Psalm officials, why don't you burn or dynamite the plant and sell it for scrap? You're fooling a lot of people. It's a bloody week in Kiev as protesters and police clash over controversial new laws restricting the right to protest in Ukraine. At least five protesters are killed and four injured from the escalating unrest. The clash has turned more and more violent with protesters throwing stones and Molotov cocktails at police and the security forces responding with tear gas and rubber bullets. These come after two months of protests over the government's failure to close a trade deal with the European Union because of Russian pressure. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number five, the International Olympic Committee, or IOC, dismisses the latest terror scare to the Sochi Winter Games after several Olympic associations said they received a suspicious email. Federations from the United States, Britain, Italy, Germany, Hungary, and Slovenia said they received emails or letters with similar content. In its reply, the IOC says the email, quote, contains no threat and appears to be a random message from a member of the public. At number six, a young Indonesian maid is the latest symbol of the sad plight of migrant workers all over the world. Pictures showing the maid's badly disfigured face and bruised body sparks a collective outpouring of shock and anger that spreads beyond Hong Kong, where Eruyana Sulistianingsi was reportedly abused by her employer for more than eight months. Her supporters say Hong Kong authorities should treat her case as an offshoot of policies that have increasingly turned against migrants over the years. And at number seven, American scientists at Virginia Tech University are developing a sugar-powered bio-battery that can store 10 times more energy than lithium-ion batteries in smartphones. The bio-battery could take the place of disposable or rechargeable batteries and is expected to be cheaper and environmentally friendly. It can be recharged by simply adding sugar. The new bio-battery could be available in three years. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and viewers the most emotionally. These 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. If you take a look today, it's still largely dominated. You still have the impact of Senator Bong Revilla's um, address, privileged speech on Monday. This is a piece uh, by editor uh, Miriam Grace Go. Uh, the wealth of, of the old man Revilla, you've got 73% angry. That's still mimicking, showing the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. Well, that is Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, January 23, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.